And now what we have here is something that I definitely for, foresaw coming eventually. Okay. I'm going to say big shout out to Lennon Mercedes first up in the chat. Big shout out to Blue Diva. Big shout out to Mary Beanie. Big shout out to Sylvia Wick Kelly. This is a situation that I definitely saw coming eventually. I can't say that I am too disappointed about it happening. I know that there, that a lot of people feel um, that the situation with Mike Elliott and Mercedes, a lot of people feel like it's not fair. It's not fair for Mike Elliott to take the blunt of the criticism for the failure of Mercedes. I would agree to a degree. I would agree that it is not completely all of his fault. I would agree that there were more hands involved in the entire process of preparing and developing and building the W13, which became something of a monstrosity, a, a huge failure, especially in the eyes of many who figured that Mercedes owed Lewis Hamilton their best foot forward to give him the best opportunity to capture his eighth world championship in which was robbed and stolen from him by the hands and our words of Massey, Formula One, FOM, Liberty Media, Jonathan Wheatley, Christian Horner. People felt like Mercedes owed Lewis Hamilton that. Mercedes got their eighth championship. They got it. They got their constructor championship. Lewis Hamilton did not get his eighth in which he earned in that race in Abu Dhabi 2021. So here we go with the W13, the W14, and things were abysmal. Uh, midway through the season, we heard Mike Elliott was going to be not so-called stepping down, but swapping positions with James Allison. Now, when it comes to the fault, I am not all in on it not being his fault. It is the responsibility of any captain on any team to a degree. It is the responsibility of coach on any team to a larger degree. It is the responsibility of a team manager or CEO to a larger degree. And then the owner. Well, Mike Elliott had those responsibilities. Okay, he had those responsibilities. And I'm going to say that I'm not completely indicting Mike Elliott for 100% of the failure of Mercedes developing that car, but I am giving him a large portion of the blame. As well as Toto. We all heard several whispers, several rooms in several corners that Mercedes decided or neglected to listen to a seven-time world champion about feedback into that car. They ignored it. Not only did they go forward one season, but they started to go forward in this season until they realized there is nothing here. And I must say that I was one who believed that if they could get that slim side pod working, it would put them ahead by a couple of seasons or so because teams would have to reverse engineer, reverse direction, and catch up. They were unable to do that. Well, Mike Elliott was that one of the chiefs in charge of doing so. He's got to make these decisions. Okay, he's got to make these decisions. And I knew that when they changed these positions for Mike Elliott and James Allison, especially once we changed philosophies, once we saw them change, not we, because we don't, we don't develop the W Series car. We don't, we don't work in Mercedes AMG F1, okay? Once we saw them change philosophies, and now we see Lewis Hamilton, six podiums, I want to say four fastest laps, one pole, maybe three fastest laps, one pole, something like that. But I think it's four. 
as much as you can say that that ain't shit compared to what Lewis has done in the past, it's a lot when you look at it in context of what has gone on at Mercedes 2022 and 2023. It's a lot. We just saw him take the fastest lap in the GP. So as far as I'm concerned, the drivers are there. The car is now getting there. They're getting a lot of information, a lot of development, and the positions have changed. Now, it could be very well that Mike Elliott, because he took some responsibility, right? He took some responsibility. I realized that the performance, I realized he said several things. He realized and he realized that he indeed may not be the best person to be in that position to help the team. I think right there, if we kind of take things apart, it could be very well also thought that Mike Elliott has lost his motivation to be a participant and a contributor to a winning team. I have made a decision. I have went in the direction that has crippled this team. Now do I have the motivation and energy to try to dig this hole, dig this, fill this hole, fill this hole and build up. I don't think he has that. I think that this probably took a lot of wind out of his sails. And on top of that, maybe Mercedes just said, you know what? We switched positions. You're right. You were part of the problem. And with you being part of the problem, we don't have the capacity to allow these things here anymore. But I got to say this, Mercedes. Whether you pushed Mike Elliott out or not, I'm going to say he is not the only person and or people that need to go or need to improve what they are doing for this team. He is not. Because I do not recall, not one time did I see, in the midst of a race, did I see Mike Elliott down in pit lane changing tires with a wheel gun in his hand. I'm waiting for more positions or more news to come out about the fact that that others have been let go and are replaced to improve and build this team back to where it has fallen from, which is at the front of championships, not only for constructors, but specifically and more so for right now, drivers championships, period. We need to see more happen. And I expect to see more happen. And at this point in time, I'm going to say, I'm going to be looking to see more from Toto Wolf. I think it's fair that some of us have questioned whether Toto should be occupying both roles as a team principal and a CEO. If he should not take more of a role like Zach Brown, be CEO, Toto. Lewis, fantastic. Now we just need to give you a car that can win. The driving was perfection. Toto. Lewis Hamilton's driving was never in question. Not by those who really watch Formula One and know, you know, by haters and people that want to exit this man out of the sport, want to try to usher Lewis Hamilton out of the sport prematurely because I believe that they know, then they fear Lewis Hamilton is the only driver other than Max Verstappen twinning and cloning himself that can get in the way of Max Verstappen's championships going forward. They know this, and that's why they want to usher him out the door. They want it easy peasy. Lewis didn't have it easy. He drove against several champions. He drove against several up-and-coming talents, including Max Verstappen, whose ass he whipped for several seasons. He didn't have it easy. He didn't drive against lack competition all the time. I mean, if you want to consider Alonzo lack, Bodas lack, Max Verstappen lack, Charles lack, Schumacher lack. You want to consider Kimi Rat lack? You want to consider all them lack? Seb lack? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. So Toto, Lewis Hamilton's driving ability and our talent was never in question. It is in question whether Mercedes can get out of their own way from becoming so arrogant after winning championship after championship after championship and humble themselves to say, we need to look 
at real data. We need to look at what really works and build from there. We need to look at who is not contributing on an equal or exceeding capability. We need to look at these pit stops. We need to look at these strategies. We need to look at everything and everybody everywhere and decide who needs to go. We need to decide, hey, we need to put more money into acquiring positions for this organization. We need to fill the gaps from which we lost by adhering to the cost cap, not having catering that costs up tenth of millions of dollars and acquiring other people's let goes because they're trying to adhere to the cost cap. We need to do whatever we got to do to win. We need to fill out whatever petitions we got to fill out to make sure our drivers are not penalized easily. Toto, you sitting back too comfortable, bro. You sitting back a little bit too humble, too comfortable, not humble, too comfortable, too passive. A lot of people still have a problem with Toto as far as, as for, and Mercedes, as far as what they were willing to do to try to make what was right wrong. Make what was wrong right. So Mike Elliott, whether he was pushed out the door or... Rather, he decided himself it was time for him to go. Yeah, he gets a good blame of that fault. He's going to get that. Because when you're in charge, heavy is the head that wears the crown. When you're over a department, heavy is the head that wears the crown. When you're the captain, heavy is the head that wears the crown. Mike Elliott's head was heavy. He wore the crown. He failed at it. Point blank period. I send my scout out to make sure that he's going to bring transfers in. He's going to bring nice five-star recruits into this team. I expect him to bring me so, but at the end of the day, I make the decision on who's hired and who's fired. And if I keep people on that should be fired, I am responsible for that failure. Mike Elliott is responsible for his failure. They switched possessions, and now it seems like Mercedes is on an upswing. Maybe they identified the problem. Or maybe Mike himself identified what the problem was, as he said before. But regardless of what Mike does, I wish the best for him. I hope he does well in his next endeavors. I hope that he rediscovers himself in some capacity to maybe enjoy life doing something else if he so chooses. If not, enjoy life, Mike. 20 plus years you've been with a team that has done nothing short of being great. You've been with a team and part of a team and contributed in a team season in and season out that led to them hoisting the highest award that they can hoist. You are not a failure yourself. Not one bit. You're not a failure yourself. You may have fallen short in a season in some capacity, but you are not a failure, sir. You have achieved and you have been part of success to many great things. So I do wish you the best. Now, 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 now. Let's get to some other things. Small bit of topic, just a small bit of topic. Let's get to a small bit of topic. And I would say that indeed, Lim is playing it smart this past weekend. Danny Rick doing what he has not done in so long since leaving Red Bull, besides for winning that one race, I believe with McLaren, Monza might have been Monza. Seventh, position seventh, pretty good points for AlphaTauri. Pretty good points, pretty good day for Danny Rick returning back shortly after Texas GP coming in this race and surprising a lot of us in qualifying and then even as the ending race result. But Liam Lawson, I still think a lot of us feel like Liam should be in the seat. Will I am says, good day, everyone. Merck's failures are the sum of its parts. No pun intended. No one person is to blame to their downfall. Bigger issue, who replaces Mike? Those are big CTO shoes to fill. I agree with part of that. I do. And you are right. No one person is to completely blame for the downfall. But Mike wears some blame for the downfall, bro. He wears some blame for the downfall. He's not to blame, like I said, 100% for it all. But he is wearing some blame for that downfall. When you make decisions 
when people come to you and you can make these decisions, because Mike's been Mercedes 20 plus years, he can say, hey, this guy's not it. That's not it. That's, but he, hey, when you don't do that or you do do that and you make the wrong decisions, you got to wear the blame. So Mike's wearing some of that blame. Big man things. Listen, let's talk about this real quick. Checo, you really giving the race seat away just like that. Okay, Danny, let's go. Musa, hey, this is what I'm about to talk about. Liam Lawson is has said that if he is going to come into Formula One, it is going to be by way of Red Bull. And he is smart for saying and or sticking to those guns if he does so. By the way, you see the VIP box is missing. It has been shipped to our latest and newest VIP member, Sheferson. Congratulations to you. Also, Insure Frames will be receiving his gift card for winning kickback quality trivia, which we will be playing again this coming up weekend as we go into the next GP. So Liam Lawson, very smart. Why shouldn't Liam sit back and just wait? Be patient. He's been patient all this long. He got an opportunity. He got to do a nice audition for Red Bull. Up until that time, the only driver giving Alphatari points was Yuki. Liam comes in, manages well, doesn't cost him any money in the cost cap greatly. Brings the car out, brings the car home, and even comes home with some groceries. Lim's audition went damn good for Red Bull. And our Red Bull probably see the, 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 they probably see a very good amount of potential in Lim. Danny Rick is doing good as of right now. One race. Sergio Perez has been doing pretty bad in multiple races before that doing good and then not so much. So Danny Rick will be waiting for Perez to be on his way out, which I don't think Perez goes past 2024 with Red Bull. If he does, I'd be surprised something has to happen just as a catalyst of change. So Perez will be out. Danny Rick will be in and Liam will also be in behind that when that happens. I don't think it's, too far beyond 2025 that we see Liam Lawson in AlphaTauri or Red Bull. Will says, then we have to blame Toto. I did that, bro. I gave Toto some blame too, bro. I gave him some blame too. And that's why I say I think that he needs to decide what position he's really going to fill. Be team principal or be CEO. Maybe be CEO. You better CEO, man. Get a good team principal in there. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and, and separate, compartmentalize these duties. Uh, his decision to shift Mike into James' role and shift James into Enos. Uh, like Maria says, the fish rots from the head down. I believe that. You get some blame, you get some blame. And then like over <laughs> out here today, facts, Toto gets some blame. Toto gets some blame, without a doubt. That's why I showed this right here. This radio message to Lewis Hamilton. Oh, he going to get some blame from the Mexico GP. Lewis, fantastic. Now we just need to give you a car that can win. But when I said this about Toto before when I was talking, people wanted to tell me that, no, that, you know, Toto, he, he, he don't need to go. I'm not saying he need to go, but I'm saying he got to wear that on his shirt, though. He says that he can occupy these two positions efficiently, and he has. So I, I'm not the one to doubt him for doing it. But he's failed for two seasons now. So he, yeah, he got to wear some of that blame. Toto definitely got to wear it. Only difference is who firing Toto? Toto's in a position where, you know what? You got some of these positions you got to hear ain't great. Mike, you're not so high up on the totem pole, but you did have some other things that you should have done that you didn't do. Toto trusted you to do them. You didn't make them happen. He's going to wear some of the blame for giving you that those, that, those stripes. And you're going to wear this blame for not fulfilling those shoes. So it's easier to replace Mike Elliott, especially with James Allison in play, than it is to replace Toto Wolf. Just like the fish rots from the head, if you're going to cut that head off, you better be ready for what's going to follow next. You better be ready for what's going to follow next. If you want to dethrone Toto, you're talking about a mass 
mass failure across many areas of Mercedes. If we get to the point where Total Wolf has to be replaced after several failing seasons, yeah, it's a wrap. But at this point in time, you already know, star players are less likely to go before the coaches. Basketball, head coach, Go into a losing season, your star players could have played like shit, but you know what? How many first-round draft picks are we going to be able to get? How many first-round draft picks are we going to have hold against the salary cap? It is easier for us to replace the coach than it is to replace the players. This is not the case in Formula One. Aside from the drivers, the drivers. This is not the case when it comes to the organization levels. Mike Elliott is easier to replace and is a little bit less damage control than it is to replace Total Wolf, given everything that he's done and stood for while he's been there. They not getting rid of Total, but yes, Total going to wear some of that blame. Facts. He going to wear it as well. He's going to have to sit there and wear it. Anybody seen John Wick 4? Right? I ain't like when they shot my man, but rest in peace because he ended up dying and that probably was part of the whole situation. He was sick. He already knew what was going on. So they went ahead and, and you know, in, in a way, tribute to his character and his life and acting in that movie. But the guy, when he walks in and that douchebag French guy who didn't even want to fight his own battles reminds me of somebody else. He says he shoots this guy instead of the one, the manager of the hotel the manager of the Continental to have him walk around in shame. If I shoot you, you become a martyr. If I shoot him, you lose that and you have to walk around and wear that. Total Wolf is the manager of the Continental right now. He's walking around and wearing that like the scarlet letter A. He's going to have to work to fix it. And you know what? He's going to make some heads roll if he's got to to fix it. Agree, Toto should shift to CEO, bring to uh, Jer uh, Jerome D'Ambrosio as team principal. I, I believe that. It's a shame Liam didn't win Super Formula, but that Suzuka crash was wicked. His chip was sealed after Suzuka. Hey, it is a shame he didn't win it, but that man has show what he's capable of. And I'm pretty sure even outside of not winning Super Formula, he's going to have himself an opportunity at Red Bull. Definitely will. I yeah, I agree. I, I know it's a shame. He and you know it's good to have on your resume to get that. It is. But I'm not taking nothing from Liam given what he did when he took set in for Danny Rick. And honestly, we gotta see if this is an admiration of Danny Rick this past weekend in Mexico. If he can make it happen this coming up weekend, then I'm gonna say we might be looking at something that's real. If Danny Rick reverts back to the mean of what we've seen. As of lately, then I'll, hey, there we go. I mean, we're back in the same boat. And if they continue, I, I mean, if Danny Rick does this at Alpha Tari and it's just abysmal, I don't understand how Red Bull even consider putting him in the Red Bull seat if they just dislike Perez that much. Like, they got to, for for some some sake, let Perez finish out the season if he even wants to finish. I'm not putting Danny Rick in the RB20 if he can't even show me consistently to do something at Alpha Torrey like Albon is doing in Williams, like Oscar is doing in McLaren, like Alonzo is doing at Aston Martin. If Danny Rick can't do that, I don't know why Red Bull would even put him in that seat. I ain't going to lie. I would prefer to see Liam Lawson in the RB20 before I see Danny Rick in there. I'm just being straight up. That's just how I feel right now, in my opinion. I would prefer to see Liam Lawson in the RB20 before I see Danny Rick in the RB20, especially if he continues to deliver just some lackluster season. As, as seasoned as he is, if he gives us a lackluster season, I don't want to see him in the RB20. I want to see somebody who, who hasn't shown us what his ceiling is. That's what I want to see. I want to see somebody with more potential and upside. That's what I want to see. And more potential and upside right now, something that's undiscovered right now in the game of Formula One on the grid is Liam Lawson. We got to see him for a, a, a small sample size. And in that small sample size, he gave us a very flavorful bite. I mean, it was like if you had a donut this big and you just bit into it the size of a lifesaver and it had the flavor of just some big giant caramel apple because it's fall cheesecake. It's like, damn, 
that blew me away. That's what Liam Lawson did. Small sample size, phenomenal results, given the perspective. I would prefer to see him in an RB20 before I see Danny Rick, unless Danny Rick shows us something phenomenal, just something crazy that makes us say he's back. He ain't back after this last race in Mexico. He's just on radar now, like, bloop. Oh, oh, oh there it is. The, uh, where'd it go? That's kind of what he's like. It's like, bloop. It's like, it's something there, but maybe not there on the radar. That's how he is right now. He's not in stealth mode, but he's just under radar vision where every now and then he has to come over that crest and it peaks it and pings it. But other than that, I'm still waiting to see a little bit more for Danny Rick before I say, you know what, Danny Rick, he done found himself. He done, he done found himself. He off that tractor. He done doing all these cameos. He back to being a real Formula One competitive driver. And, and I'm not saying I've seen that yet. I'm not saying that I've seen that yet. So we'll, we'll have to see what happens going forward. But I do know Perez is doing his best to have an exit show. And if Danny Rick does for some reason spike and actually hold it consistently, Perez just rolled out the red carpet for Danny Rick. And Danny Rick should do nothing else but take that opportunity and run with it. Liam Lawson, if that seat opens up at AlphaTauri, I hope that Red Bull give it to you. No, I hope that Red Bull allow you to sit in there and do what you got to do. Liam has been the closest to a MV talent for the Red Bull since MV. It was supposed to be Yuri. Woo! Racist Yuri Vips. But one Twitch stream killed his chances in the Red Bull seat. You know, no, no, it wasn't. It, it, it wasn't the Twitch stream that killed him. The stream was good. The gameplay was decent. You know what I'm saying? The bit rate was fine. It was Yuri Vips using the N-word that sealed that. And even then, they didn't seal it as much as they could have. You know, try not saying the N-word with your friends playing online like it's all good. While you sitting there supposed to be a representative for a team, a driver, what are you doing? I mean, I guess you being yourself, but you being yourself wasn't great. That wasn't good. Yeah, that, that stream, the stream was good. I mean, it was clear. Wasn't skipping, wasn't glitching. It was the N-word. You know, maybe he needed it to glitch when he said that. Then he'd be okay. You know what I'm saying? Blue Diva. If she was available, I would say, Susie, go get it. <laughs> right. Susie, go get it. You know what? Hey, I'm, I'm not opposed to, you know, Jamie Chadwick coming up and doing something, too. I'm, I'm just going to. I've, I've said this to you all before, and I'm going to say it again because I'm really serious about it. With what Logan has managed to do in Formula One, I don't see any harm or foul for them to give Jamie Chadwick an opportunity next season. I'm, I'm being real. I'm being real. With what Logan Sargent has done at Williams this season, I'm not even batting an eye if Jamie Chadwick comes in and wrecks two cars. Logan Sargent has not done well. I am really want to see what Jamie Chadwick can do. Really. I mean, what has Logan Sargent done? He got one point. And that's really because of an entire situation. It just fell in his hands. I mean, you had to be there in order to get it. But still, if it wasn't for that, he wouldn't have any points. Why am I supposed to be hard felt if they give Jamie Chadwick an opportunity? Hell, I don't. She ain't even doing as bad as Logan doing in Formula One in IndyCar. Hell, she probably don't place higher than him before he even placed there. Williams, for real, if you get rid of Logan, if you were willing to waste your time on Latifi, which you wasted your time on Latifi, if you're willing now to waste your time on Logan Sargent, which you're spending time with Logan Sargent, it's going to be up for debate if it's a waste, depending on next year, since you're going to give him two years. I'm telling you, after Latifi, Logan Sargent, I'm done with people with the L in their name for Williams. Get rid of the, get rid of the L's. Go ahead and bring Jamie Chadwick in and say, you know what? Why not give this woman a chance? Champion in her own series, W Series. Went to IndyCar, sponsored by a major team, major organization. Let's, let's just go for it. Let's, let's be the first team in Formula One history to put a woman who has proven herself in other racing series in the seat of a Formula One car on the grid and make history. Because you're not making shit with Logan Sargent. You didn't make shit with Latifi. Nothing. At least you can say you made history 
once again as the great team, one of the greatest teams in Formula One at some point in time since you have fallen from heaven, do something that can make sense in some way. Latifi didn't make sense. He made dollars because he was a pay seat. Logan Sarge is not making sense right now. Hopefully he can next season. But if he doesn't, I am challenging Williams to say, listen, why can't we not have a two-to-one ratio? We gave two male drivers an opportunity that wasted our time, one to be left to be proven if he's wasting our time. Let's give Jamie Chadwick an opportunity to see what she can do in that car. Start testing her now. Start giving her time now. Give her time and testing coming up. Give her time in the season as it starts. Let's see that. Put Jamie Chadwick out there as one of the drivers for this season. I'm just saying, like, Williams, you, if after this, you need to do something that's going to make sense. I understand what you're doing makes brains and some dollars, but it ain't bringing you nothing else. Alpine is your long. Oh, my goodness. Do we even need to go into that? We will go into that later. No, no. You know what? Skip that. Skip that. I, I don't even think we, we going into that later. We might go into the Blue Diva says, I meant get Susie at the Merc. She was sorted. Got, yeah, yeah, she was sorted. Facts. Facts. She was sorted. She would indeed get to get that sorted out. They need to let her come in and be team principal. Let her go ahead and run it up. Because she'll, she'll get it together. She will indeed get it together. Matter of fact, I'm about to see if I got this file because I want to show this because I'm telling you, I thought that this, I thought this itself was an indictment when they showed this because to me, it, it only showed that Williams need not worry about anything but one driver on their squad right now, and that's Alex Albon. I know when they showed it what they were attempting to do and what they decided they were going to do, but I think when they showed it, they really didn't realize what they did. I think they really didn't realize what they did. And as that's loading up, I'm going to get it ready so that I can bring it on down and download it for you all and bring it up on screen because I was, I ain't going to lie, I started laughing when I see it, saw the shit. I was like, did they really, did they, I don't think that was a good post. I don't think that was a good idea to, to post that. But yeah, I think Williams is in place to do something. Uh, Haas is going to continue to do the changes that they do. They they just going to continue to be the laughing stock of Formula One, you know, and still talk big, big shit like they really making some pop, like they really making some high happen at Haas. Haas is not making anything happen. They don't make anything happen, but show us a lazy Susan of sponsors that they can go in and out of relationships with. I mean, they are sponsor whoring. That is what, <laughs> that's what Williams is doing. They sponsor whoring. That's what they doing. Let me let me bring this up right now. I'm going to bring this up so you can see it and then you can understand what I'm talking about because I felt that when Williams did this, they probably should have left this off because there was no way for you to do it without sacking your other driver, without putting your other driver just plainly out in view of how bad he is. And to me, it was horrible. This this is uh this is this is right here. This is it. I'm I'm trying to tell you. When I saw this, I was like, yo, bro, you cannot be serious. So this is it right here. They bring this in and they decide to show this as they are showing the point situation for Williams, right? So as they're showing this point situation, and I'm gonna rewind this so you can check it out. Okay, we got the drivers right here. Now, now, Alex scores. Now, th this is all Alex. This is all Alex. None of this is, is <laughs> none of this is Logan. It cracks me up. None of this is Logan yet. We're still not at Logan. Still not at Logan yet. Finally, still not at Logan yet. Still going. Oh, finally, we got, we got first points for Logan right here. First points for Logan. Look how many races that is before Logan pops up on this situation. Just look at how many that is. I mean, hot damn. This is crazy. To me, it was damn near an indictment. I'm just being so serious. Like, are, are we really doing this? But they decided they thought this was a good idea. Logan scores first point of the season opener. That's all Logan. Stern defense. They should. They didn't want to put Alex. That's all Alex. I mean, they didn't want to put Alex name right again. Put Alex. Like Logan's not even here yet. He's not even showed up to the party yet. Still ain't showed up to the party. The all these points is Alex Albon. 
All of these points are Alex. Finally, Logan in double points. Double points and Logan's first. Not, not double points just for Logan. And then here we go again. Alex Albon, surely to himself. Three more races left. Now, I got to ask you, how many of these do you think are actually going to be Logan's ch chance and opportunity to score points? How many points do you think Logan going to score before the end of the season's over? Three more races. All them races went by. He didn't score not a damn point. He only scored this point by default because of what happened. But that happens in Formula One. So I'm not taking the point from him. I'm just saying in context of the situation, had that not happened, this not happened, that not happened, the other thing not happened, last week not happened, this week happened, and then a couple of other things happened, happened, Logan wouldn't even have that happening. Blue Diva, uh, Will says, I think Sophie uh, Flores would have a better shot at F1, first woman to score points in F3 this year. By the way, yeah, she is. Very good point, Will. Probably has more super license points as well. Very good point, because I did post her before uh, about her in F3. Very good point. I, I agree with you, and I don't agree with Portion. I don't agree. I agree with the fact that she's in F-Series and she's in F3. But when you look at the F3 car compared to IndyCar, where's the comparison? How I'm talking about sheer handling and horsepower. What's the comparison of an F3 car to an Indy car? How much more horsepower are we talking about right there? That that's one thing that I would like to know. And I could have swore maybe, just maybe, I have. Yep, I do. I do have it. I got it right here. I got it right here. So we're going to go right in here. We're going to take that shit off because that, that right there is, is crazy. We don't need to see that. That right there was just horrible. So right here, because I did this comparison a long time ago. So we're talking about F-Series cars. Indy car, 700 to 900 horsepower. F3 car is 380 horsepower. So even though you say Jamie has, Sophia has a little bit more experience, she's got experience on an, in an F-Series car, but Jamie Chadwick has experience with F1-type horsepower and power. Although we know the Indy car and the Formula 1 car are a bit different in handling, especially steering, still, the capability of experience of somebody having the experience of the horsepower life. We're talking about Jamie Chadwick is dealing with a car 700 to 900 horsepower compared to an F3 car at 380 to 400 horsepower, if that. F2 is even a large jump. Jamie Chadwick's there with the power. So I still, to me, Jamie Chadwick is a multi-time W Series champion in a series. Where is Sophia right now in F3? Where is she right now? Score Point scored in F3? Understand that. Give her all the praise and props for that. But where is she right now as far as her driver position in F3? In a 380 horsepower car. While we talk about Jamie Chadwick, she's right now, right now. This is why I still vote for Jamie over Sophia. Right now. That's what she's doing. Now, still, Sophia, she's, what else is she doing? She's competing with males. She's competing with drivers, whether male or female. Both Jamie Chadwick and her are going to get those points from me. She is in the F-Series car. I'm going to give her that tick on that box. But Jamie Chadwick in a W-Series car, I believe that car was still built by the same company, maybe, that built the F3, F3 car. Maybe. If not, it's still not too, it's 100 more horsepower. I give her that. But I'm still giving Jamie the fact that she's dealing with a car with the horsepower comparable to a Formula One car. A Formula One car is about 1,000 horsepower. Jamie is doing Jamie is doing very well over here in the States. She is. She is definitely doing very well over here in the States. And we know how they can get when it, they the Americans believe that rubbing is racing. That's just real. Rubbing is racing in America. That's what they believe. You ain't touching. If you ain't bumping, you ain't racing. So we'll see what happens. But I'm not opposed to either one of those uh ladies, those those drivers getting an opportunity. I just think that if Williams are gonna waste put two seasons in the bucket, multiple seasons in a bucket with drivers that are definitely abysmal and have done nothing but either wreck up cars, lose races. Listen, just do something that, that blows the lid off of this historically.
Let's be the first team to put a woman, a woman who is a driver in a car and do some James Chadwick doesn't have the I know she don't have the super license points I know I get that I get that right now we're not talking about something that's officially gonna happen but the problem is why the fuck don't they get her the super license points she's got to get the mileage in she's got to get that up she she needs to be put in a position to get these points so hopefully she can get them but I'm just saying that if this was the case super license points points aside and both drivers had the license or the ability and the points to acquire the license, which I did have. I think I had that as well. Hold on. Let me see if I got that. Yeah, here I got it right here. So let's let's take a look. Let's take a look at this. Got it right here. So I believe still in Formula 2 what first still gets you 40, 40 IndyCar. Jamie Chadwick, depending on where she finishes, you know, 10th and higher, she can get one to 40 points. If they haven't changed the scale already, they may have changed it. If they haven't, then we kind of looking at something to still around the ballpark. F3, F3 is even on, look at this. They even value F3 less than IndyCar. They value F3 because even if you get first in, Indy, in F3, you're only getting 30 points compared to the 40 points in IndyCar. Although for 10th spot, you get more points getting up here. But when you start getting up to the second place, third place is where they tie and meet. But from fourth place all the way back to 10th, you're going to get more points in F3. But from third, anything on podium up, you're getting more points in IndyCar. If you get that high, if you're able to participate, Alex Polo and higher that high. All right. And right now, Jamie Chadwick is in Indy next. So that also is a difference. I forgot about that. So I should have put that in context as well. I did forget about that. But yeah, I'm, I would hope that they can, you know, they can get these super license points. I would hope that they would be able to acquire them so that we could see them in that situation. I think there needs to be a bit more effort in order to put them in positions to get those points. So yeah, very, and, and that is quite, that is correct. I just saw the rest of your super chat there. Baraka finishing 12th. ND next is equivalent to F2. So I, ju I just did see that as well. And you pretty much, we were going in the same direction when I just saw that. But yeah, pretty much what we got F2, uh, F2 right here in ND next equivalent. And that is it right there. So F2. So they get, they're still getting their shit. Their shit. F2 is, you know, they getting more points than IndyCar and or F3. They getting 40 across that board. So yeah, if that's the case, you know, ND next can't be, just equivalent to them in points. They got to be somewhere around IndyCar. I can't imagine Indy next having more points for second and third than IndyCar itself. So it's got to be some difference right there with Indy next. And I'll need to look that up and try to find it and see what that variance is. But, you know, they got IndyCar and then they got an asterisk Indy, by here to this IndyCar. So I would imagine it's in between there. But either way it goes, it's not too far different in points. And the biggest point is they should put these drivers in position so that they would be able to acquire these points and get that super license. That's what I would like to see. So we'll see what happens. Biggest thing here is that Mike Elliott is out of the door. And now that Mike Elliott is out of the door, Mercedes has not only removed personnel, but now they have to get somebody else in there. If they already don't have somebody ready for the job, because I would imagine that you would have somebody ready to step in before you put somebody out. You don't want a vacancy just sitting there. So I want to know who that person, I would like to see who that person is going to be. If that person is going to be a, contr a positive contributor and then Mercedes, you're also putting yourself on the clock day since you got rid or Mike Elliott decided to resign. However, it went you're on the clock to make sure that you show up and show out 2024. There are supposed to be some big things in the pipeline for the 2024 car, the W15. Red Bull is also claiming that they're going to have big things in the pipeline for the RB20. And I'm here to say, I think Red Bull stumbles in 2025. This could age bad and I could give a damn because people are wrong. I just, I watched Will Bucks in this past weekend be wrong about shit he was talking about on TV. Before then, Jacquees was wrong about something he talked about. I mean, they all got somebody in the ear to, oh, that's wrong, that's wrong. Listen, they make all mistakes. They say, quote, things that ain't even right, make takes and they bad. Whatever. You ain't gonna criticize or crucify me here for shit that professionals that are paid by Formula One to be on worldwide television do and I'm doing on my channel. You can kiss my ass for that. I'm saying right now, I think Red Bull Racing stumble in 2025. I think they stumble before 2026 comes. Something tells me that it's coming. 2025, 2026, Red Bull stumbling.
But I think it's going to be 2025. That's what I think. So we'll see what happens. Uh, 2024 could be good. We're going to enjoy the rest of these races and see what goes down on there. So big shout out. We will be in right there coming tomorrow and Friday. Going to be free practice days. We're going to be here Saturday for quality. So be here for kickback quality trivia so you can get your opportunity to win a $50 or $25 gift card. Big shout out to the family pulling up today at this live chat, this random live chat. The family is strong. Big shout out to my Wolfpack members. Big shout out to everybody that supports their drivers and their teams with good intent and an and ethnic eth ethical responsibility not being some racist jackass or being somebody who's going to try to demoralize another person big shout out to you all as well and i will see you all soon peace be safe wolf pack out ah